Brought to you by Fort Lauderdale. Hold the mayo. It's time for Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. Find out what's being served with Mike, Defo, and Luby, the only show that covers food, sports, and the proper maintenance of your car. And now, a man who had the distinction of having an entire health clinic named in his honor, Mike Mayo. I want the flim flam sauce with the awesome bay with Shafafa on the side. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back. We're back on the Lunchbox, live, in person, from Batch New Southern Kitchen in downtown Fort Lauderdale. I'm Mike Mayo. That's Jeff Defoe of the Forest. That's Mike Luby Lubitz, who's going to join us in a minute. And, uh, boy, um, I like these two-day work weeks. Uh, I'm getting ready for it. Defoe, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing great. I feel great. It's been uh, beautiful out. And uh, good to have you back, Mike Mayo, after your uh, travels around uh, various uh, campuses here. Big time colleges in Florida. Your daughter really played you like the tool that you are and uh, had you going to schools uh, that she had no intention of it, going it to. Finally, I finally figured it out that it was a three day excused absence vacation from her school there in her go. last semester. Very She's got full fledged senioritis. Oh, yeah. wow. A way to fleece me into going to different places, including a trip to Bush Gardens to ride roller coasters at, and visit her friends at University of South Florida in Tampa. We went to University of Central Florida in Orlando. No intention of going, but uh, we just <laughs> yeah. rode by Mickey Mouse another day, another couple hundred dollars in meals, and uh, ended up in Tallahassee, which we knew, like Barzini all along, it was going to be Tallahassee be, uh, all along. State, sure. And um, and as you can see, I bought, I got the yeah, merch. So, so you're the one that bought the <laughs> Florida State dad thing? FSU. It's probably in reverse uh, on your uh, screens here but there, there's still dust on the back where they yeah, forgot no, to I got it, it. Yeah. I uh, I bought the shirt nice. very comfy it fits uh, well and uh, Mike Luby Lubitz an alum I love it my oh, dad was an old uh, and never bought wife, an FC yeah. dad shirt yeah. and <laughs> you know I have some eating <laughs> adventures to recount I have other adventures we're going to have some food right here laid down oh I've been God, trying to be very good uh, of but uh, as they lay out the whole menu oh, that, all, of course, all, yeah, Luby ordered, uh, <laughs> we welcome everybody back. I don't know if the Let's Eat group has crossed the 150,000 threshold yet. I think they're there. I've been monitoring well, whatever that a little is, bit. It looks dangerous. Um, oh, and look we've got, that. look at that. Wow. We've got the jambalaya got for jambalaya. Defo. Yeah, we've yeah. got some fried chicken sandwiches. We've got, this is me now. I am making wiser choices. Salmon over here. Got the nice shrimp and avocado salad over there. Uh, I will be putting my blinders on and just going for the healthy stuff. Oh, actually. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can get all kinds of healthy stuff here, and even the stuff that uh, you know that jambalaya is things. good. What, what are these? Well, no. you know, those I are don't the know, fried chicken. We're going to replace some of this because I want everyone to be able to see. Well, everything. we've got. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can do their fried what chicken I've been sandwich. Doing, uh, you know, they they call it the Nashville hot chicken sandwich, and then they've got like a mild version. I just like that they brought two for eat. I, I just wanted it on the, you know, I, I'm going away, so I don't need a ton of leftovers. You're today. going to the Dominican Leftovers Republic. are yours. I will be today. taking uh, many of the leftovers because I'm here in town now, and I'm completely broke now that I see what all the <laughs> fees are going to be and all the different registration and all the deposits. And uh, yeah, I was almost going to I was going to make fun of you for wearing the FSU dad, and then I realized you guys are already putting money into her FSU career. So you are an FSU dad, so yeah. you might as well own it already. I'm, I've got skin in the game, and uh, lots of uh, unfortunately going to be uh, oh, bills. Oh, yeah, all bills. my bills to pay, yeah. savings and cash in the. She'll have a good time. The good part is though that Florida <laughs> prepaid college plan really comes in handy. Yeah, I did huge. it since the month she was born, nice. and one of the few progressive things that we've done here in this state. But anyway, I don't want to get into politics. I do actually do want to start with some real world news today. Uh, this morning we learned that, that O.J. Simpson. Parental James Simpson uh, died yesterday, apparently, according to his family in a statement. And I guess the question for us here, former sports guys, a lot of us had personal interactions with OJ. I know I did. Uh, Defo in a second. But is it RIP, rest in peace, or RIH, rotten hell, OJ Simpson? <laughs> it's, this is a very polarizing figure. Uh, you talk about polarizing restaurants. But uh, the man, obviously a legendary athlete who then went on to have other things in his life uh, where for all the fame, there was infamy. Uh, Jeff DeVoe Tafaris, what were your feelings when you heard the news this morning? Uh, a little surprised because uh, he had just denied that he had any kind of illness. Uh, but then again, uh, OJ's credibility was uh, not very solid uh, ever since we learned about uh, his unfortunate, uh, I mean, uh, just bizarre temper that uh, we found out he had. Uh, and then, um, 
two people are dead, uh, you know, in, in, in horrendous fashion. The trial, uh, of course, uh, one of the most uh, historic things that ever happened uh, here in this country. Uh, amazing. The documentary on it is uh, incredible. Uh, the guy that did the documentary, Luby and I had him on. Was that the People versus OJ? Yes. Yeah, the that, good yeah. one. Not the one that was on FX. The one that was up for like, Academy Awards. Uh, yeah. Tremendously well done. Uh, I had a few experiences with uh, OJ. Uh, I, I was a vendor at Shea when he broke the record, uh, the 2,000-yard mark. Uh, he did it at Shea Stadium uh, and, and against the uh, Buffalo Bills. The Jets were playing the Bills uh, behind Reggie McKenzie. I had a pretty good angle on it, so I saw so that's a real good view of the carry. OJ, the athlete, athlete. the spectacular the Heisman was, award uh, winning. Uh, covered a lot of uh, USC rusher. football, and OJ was always around the program there. But uh, And then I uh, waited on OJ. I've, I've told this story many times. Uh, one of the few guys ever in history that um, I actually physically was out in the parking lot inquiring if there was something wrong with the service because the tip it was so minuscule compared to uh, the uh, check that uh, and, and we were waiting on very few tables there. You didn't turn over a lot of tables in this restaurant. It was a high-end restaurant in L.A. Yeah. and uh, That was know, at the Moroccan one. The right? Moroccan restaurant, yep. Dharma Greb, great place. And um, we had to go out he and stiffed ask. stiffed you? I uh, gave us like a like a two percent tip on uh, what was a substantial well, check at the time, and uh, we had to walk outside. And we said, uh, uh, "Mr. Simpson, uh, how, how was your meal?" And he said, "Oh, it was great, man." We said, "Well, I, and how was the service? Was everything okay?" And he said, "Oh, you guys are the best, man. Hysterical, you're the best service I've ever had." And then my friend Spencer, who was uh, part of the uh, three man waiting team that we had in this section, looks in his hand, and he has OJ's like two dollars in there. And uh, he just looks at him with a pathetic look, and O.J. was shamed into putting up another five. Well, considering the way he treated uh, or mistreated some other waiters in the Los Angeles yeah, area, yeah, yeah. allegedly. Yeah, well, what was although, good was that they had no silverware there in this restaurant. You ate with your fingers, which I, I don't know that Luby experienced this when he was in Marrakesh <laughs> there, but no, not that's the tradition. You, you pull, like, it. a whole chicken apart with your fingers. You would love it because uh, that, that yeah, would I've be your yeah. savage style of eating. But. Yeah. That's the way they do it. So, so there were no knives on the table. Oh, well, that's good. You didn't have good. to worry if OJ stole the silverware if he was going to get angry and like. But, but we didn't you know, know that was one of his. So here, no, here's the nice thing. You know, usually time, you say right, right after thing. somebody dies, oh, it's too soon. You shouldn't do this. But this is a person. Let's face it. Um, a lot of people, even though he was acquitted in a criminal court of law, he was found liable and and really uh, culpable of two murders in a civil trial. Uh, he then also spent time in prison for a. Theft of his own his own stolen rubber heisman. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Nine years for a rubber heisman. Complicated legacy. Obviously, the implications of his trial. It was a huge benchmark in American culture, race relations. The way you viewed that trial depended upon you know a lot of things and your socioeconomic background, your racial background, um, and uh, but this was a guy. My experiences personally with him uh, was. A very affable gentleman when he was in the media. That's how I first met him. When well, he was, was beloved for when, a reason. That's I, a funny thing. When like, I was, was when I was a rookie, you know, a uh, sports writer at the Sun Sentinel, and I was covering the Miami Dolphins, and we were in that little Motel Six room that they had, at, you know, that was the press headquarters during their days, and when they trained at St. Thomas University, OJ was part of the NBC crews that would come in and work the games. And one, I remember one week he came in, very hungover. Uh, and mentioned it to us that how much he was hung over and how he was down in South Beach partying, but he was like one of the guys, and he was just like kibitzing with all of us in the press room, and I was like, wow, this is O.J. Simpson. He's a pretty cool dude. Uh, very affable, uh, but uh, again, at that time, he was starring in the movies with Airplane, you know, that ridiculous uh, you know, comedy series with Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, he was, uh, and, he was good. And, Those were uh, classic movies. What are you talking What's about? What's funny is I actually liked him. As Defoe makes fun of Lynn Swan a lot. I liked O.J. as a sideline guy. Like He wasn't horrible. Sprinting through airports in Hertz commercials. I mean, he was accepted. Guy who is a star athlete in college, a you know, career record rusher in the NFL with the Buffalo Bills, which was a pathetic team at the time, but he still got stardom and uh, and was beloved until that fateful night in 1994 when his, you know, then ex-wife and Ron Goldman, a waiter, ended up dead and uh, he ended up implicated. And then I'll never forget the night of the Bronco chase. Where were you that night on uh, June? I believe it was uh, 16th or, or so. I remember exactly where I was. Uh, I was at the uh, Stained Glass Pub, which was a famous place uh, up here in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I used to frequent it. I lived in a the neighborhood there. And uh, I was actually, I'd just come back from a trip. I had called a, a couple of fights uh, on network TV, Prime Network. 
And I was watching, they were replaying those fights while I was sitting there with my wife at the time. And I'm watching. <laughs> Which wife number was that at the uh, time? Was, uh, probably one. Uh, it was number, number one. two. Yeah. No, it was two. And, uh, okay. So uh, we're sitting there watching TV. Me. And then all of a sudden, there's a, you know, I never watch myself doing anything or listen back to anything. So uh, I'm watching. It's going, all right, you know, not doing a bad job there, DeForest, uh, Mr. Don Dunphy. There you go. And uh, sure enough, in the middle of like the round six of the first fight, off that goes, and here comes uh, A. A. C. Cowens, uh, Cowan, 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 Al Cowan, Cowan, yeah. Cowan, Cowan, and yes. uh, and uh, and OJ in the white Bronco chase, and that was what was up there the rest of the time. So, uh, Jeez, well, I remember the night very distinctly because I was at the U.S. Open Golf Championship. Oh, that funny. year it was played at Oakmont, Pennsylvania. It was Arnold Palmer's hometown home course, uh, and. I was in the media hotel had a press lounge because a lot of the you know national and international press stayed at one hotel and this was back in the days when uh, the contingents would get together after the rounds were over after all the deadlines were done we'd hang out in these press lounges at the hotel have a couple of beers that night was supposed to be NBA finals and there was an NBA finals between yes. the Knicks and the right, Houston right. Rockets yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. and we were all watching that game was great, I was in was a group a it was all star a group of sports writers, Rick Riley from Sports Illustrated, who at the time was like one of the preeminent voices, that time, yep. Dan Jenkins, his own self, legendary Classic, writer, oh, wow. golf writer. We were all in this press room. I was kind of the, you know, the kid reporter, You're probably young then, yeah. but I was hanging out. I was a full time golf beat writer at that point. Oh, wow. And um, we were watching the game and all of a sudden they cut in. Tom Brokaw cuts in with this scene of the Bronco chase. But to sit in that room, and again, remember that night, we thought O.J. was going to off himself right then and there. That was the whole thing. That's what Al kept saying, right? And that he was holding a gun to his head. They were slowing down. They let him go back to his house, and they ended up talking him out of uh, killing himself back then. But I, I'll never forget, I was in a press room with all these legendary sports writers who knew O.J. Yeah, intimately, with him, yep. and yet their reaction was very dark humor. I mean, it's just, oh, it's, really? you know, to sit there funny. and, you know, <laughs> well, Riley, Jenkins you know, is Riley. cracking wise. And, and that just shows you conceivable, though, that this guy was we, we didn't know about the violence that uh, was uh, going on between him and Nicole Brown uh, Simpson. Like before that. Yeah. I mean, which was well documented and and largely sloughed over by the L.A. police because mm. of uh, the popularity and, and the uh, general likability of O.J. Simpson. Uh, and now we've got no, I no I visit know. to we batch. We don't need it. Would be complete oh without you had our to drop biscuits. biscuits. I mean, you had to do that to Looks us. like they I'm got sorry, a new yeah. uh, jam and jelly now. They Looks switched like, out the jam. There you go, man. Like, uh, what kind there of went is a rat right, right, right out the window. We love the rat. Sorry, I know we didn't need it. I'm trying to go carb-free. I'm not going to come here. No, you're going to have to have some of that. Sorry. Hey, I know this is a food show, but I did want to get into OJ because we're also – we do talk sports and and carnival. And this is a local figure. You don't have to justify the content on the show. No, I don't. It's your show. I do believe that in his later years, I know for sure that in order to escape the full judgment of $31 million civil fine or, you know, the uh, the uh, compensation that he was supposed to pay to the Goldman family, uh, that uh, he came to Florida where, of course, you have protections for your home and some other things to hide assets. Yes. Uh, I believe he lived here in the Fort Lauderdale area. I believe. Uh, well, I know that my ex-wife, Michelle, went one year for her birthday with my daughter to the lobster bar on Las Olas and who was sitting at the very next table over, but one OJ Simpson. And, um, they let everybody alone, but my wife obviously doesn't have great feeling. Ex-wife doesn't have great <laughs> feelings towards a, uh, somebody oh, no. who was accused of those I mean, things. It was hard to accept, but, but the other thing I'll never forget is in the late nineties after he started, he lived down in the South Miami area, but he would hang out at Gulfstream all the time. Right. Oh, yeah. well, he I, know that. I saw him sure. at Gulfstream dozens of times in the mid to late 90s after the acquittal and what i what kind of shocked me but i guess now doesn't surprise me the way people would flock up to him like he was some wow. revered godlike figure women men asking for um autographs, autographs pictures, this was before everything. cell phones so yeah. we didn't have the selfies but it was people approaching him and he was still his genial self to those who came up to him and were like fawning over him and it was at that point that i realized that in america today there is no difference between fame and infamy no oh, yeah not even at all and that mean? it the most the, important thing is to be known for be known, something be known and it doesn't matter if it's the worst thing in the world you can be an inveterate liar and con man who makes his way to the highest office in the land and is indicted multiple times and standing trial multiple times people still will love you 
And uh, no, no, he was seen around South Florida all the time. And people will, see, I would have been a little because he look, whatever you think about that day, uh, it seemed like he did it and he got in a lot of issues after that. So it never seemed like he was in his right mind after that. So you would always hear stories of people going up to him. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'd run up to him. <laughs> like, I, it feels like he was a little off. So I don't know. Yeah, but people saw him as a guy before all the issues and just wanted to be near him. And, and that never went away. What struck me also physically was the man had the largest head yeah, and the yeah. largest hands I've ever seen. Um, and also, you wonder all those licks that he took in football. He Back then in the late 90s, he, he was hobbling. His knees were shot, you know, arthritis. And it also goes to show you the, the price you pay for playing mm -hmm. professional football. And who knows what if there was any damage to his brain. And yeah. that might have triggered something. Not that there's any excuse. For murdering two people, yeah. uh, but uh, sorry to uh, overlook. <laughs> no, no, it really is. While you're no, I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm not saying overlook it, but I'm just saying maybe he did have some of these CTEs. He, he sure was he a did. celebrity guest when. Uh, uh, what was it? That uh, was it. WQAM. Yeah, when QAM uh, first really, uh, you know, got on the scene, there it was uh, in that time, in the early '90s, and uh, he was a celebrity guest at one of their golf tournaments, and, and that met with uh, the same kind of uh, commentary and. Uh, Reaction that, that your Roger Stone interview did. I hear he had a wicked slice, down. that OJ. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we weren't <laughs> waiting on you for that joke. But, uh, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, everybody, there was nothing but adulation for this guy. Yeah, people just completely overlooked the fact, as you were mentioning, kind of implying about a certain politician, that they just overlooked all of the, in some one case, indiscretions. But in this case, impossible to overlook that the, the guy in cold blood murdered two people. Well, it is right in the, you know, everybody said what's, the first line of an obituary is going to be O.J. Simpson, the Heisman Award winning NFL Hall of Famer who was, you know, a, a controversial with, who was acquitted of double murder, but later found liable of those murders in one of the most spectacular, you know, criminal well, that's the cases thing. Like a lot of, of the, the time when century. people who were questionable pass and one remembers the good. He's one figure that I feel like people won't have problems focusing on sort of the negatives because it ended up being a, a big part of his life. The last half of his life was sort of a, a mess. So I feel like a lot of the times, you know, like a type Cobb passes and he had some issues, but people focus on the great baseball player that was. Like, I feel like with OJ, it's pretty clear the issues he had. And I, and I feel like people aren't going to run away from talking. That's going to make Pete Rose look like a piker. Oh, know? yeah, like, for sure. He's like, <laughs> like, oh, we made a couple of bets on the Reds. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, hey, you know what? Let's take our first break, and hopefully we can get Kevin. I'm going to ask you about this so before Wait. you even do this. Because well, okay. like, you've been there, and we were trying to figure this out. Uh, and, and you would be the guy that would say that this was a good thing, the pimento and cheese sandwich at the Masters. Okay. You want to get into the Masters right I, now? I, I do a little bit, just good from the food angle, because um, now, now is the Hooters that John Daly signs autographs with, is that like considered a, a three-star Michelin restaurant? You know, just, I mean, what's the uh, so, deal with pimento and cheese, my friend? And and are you going to tell me he, that it's he can't, a good He's thing? enamored by it. I don't know what to tell he's you. He's peppering me with questions. Uh, I have many thoughts of Augusta where I spent some of my fondest weeks of my sports writing career. I went there a total of 14 times. Oh, wow. I it's covered, okay to wax poetic here, too. I covered one of them for... The Spartanburg Herald Journal in my first full time job that was in South Carolina. Imagine it, it. you're in some like drive. rinky dink newspaper and, and you're there in the Masters. I was Cabin because Cabin. it was a local uh, event for us. It was a 90 right. mile drive and we got a press badge. And I'll never forget, we were that was back before. Did they was, question uh, it when you got there? No, no, no okay. Was, and it was it, what I remember, it was a much more quaint and regional event. I mean, yeah, the International Press Corps came in, uh, but it was not, the sports was not this glorious thing we had the press quarters back then was this old quonset hut with a tin roof so every time there was a rainstorm which was frequently you couldn't hear yourself think at your typewriter oh, because really? the rain was pounding oh, on this geez. tin roof and that first year it was the scott hoke choke in the playoff versus nick faldo Ooh. nick faldo won the second of his i believe back to back and it was 80 uh, 89, April of 89. And then later that year, I moved to the Sun Sentinel and I covered the next 13 Masters for the Sun wow. Sentinel, oh. it, both as golf writer and thing? columnist. That's crazy. And what, uh, you sound dormant or something? Well, Dorman was there and then went to the National and then Larry went to the New York Times. And uh, I was there as both golf writer at first and then I graduated to becoming general columnist and then Randy Mel was the golf writer and those right. were glorious days. He was Tim, Tim Rosefort, rest in peace. He was at, started off with 
at the Palm Beach Post. He was actually at the Sun Sentinel, and then he went on to greater fame and glory in the national publications and finally NBC. But anyway, it was great back in those days, covering all those. It's my favorite week of the year by far, going into the gates, the pearly gates of Augusta National. Great atmosphere, no doubt. Uh, and yeah. walking through there. And, okay, so Augusta, Nash, Augusta, Georgia, hometown of James Brown, had some decent restaurants, some places okay. that you could yeah. go for a – a civilized meal downtown. There was well, because be, they uh, had Augusta National, so they had to sort of have something. It was there. a combination of things. It's a it's a town that at the time I guess had like sixty thousand people, and yeah, they, there is you know there there are good decent restaurants in towns of sixty to hundred thousand uh up throughout the South. And so when I was there, there I remember there was one place called I, I don't know if it was called the Green Turtle or something downtown where you get some good Southern food. Again, they'd have some jambalaya and stuff. The uh, but, yeah, along Washington Road, which is out on the outer fringes where Augusta National was, was nothing but fast food joints, the Hooters, where John Daly now makes a living, uh, the Waffle House, where I would end up invariably after writing four stories on deadline on Sunday night and would be the only place open at 1130 at night, where one year I found Julius Irving, Dr. J, oh, yeah. hobnobbing with a couple of Hooters waitresses that ah. he brought to the Waffle House. Good for him. Um, Doctor, great American. And uh, but, you know, and then there was the places like the Olive Garden, the Carabas. We had our chain steakhouses. And the, so that was what we would eat during, you know, when the, the rounds were over. But on the grounds, everything in these green wrappers, the cheapest ballpark or what you call sporting venue food on the planet. That's one of their features. It's interesting that they keep egg it that salad way. was 75 cents. 75 doing, cents. Wow. Really? Uh, they had the. Um, you know, pimento. You can't cheese. even get a pen and pencil set into the nineties or yeah. late nineties. I was never a fan of pimento, pimento cheese, but I would always eat egg salad in the morning until about noon, and then I would switch over to. They had these little like Chick Fil like A chick sandwiches. Yeah, well, George, these are dynamite George is the home of Chick Fil A. They had Chicken Fil A sandwiches yeah, there that they the sold for like two dollars or dollar fifty, and went up to two dollars. But they also had them in the press room for free crates and crates of them so i had to restrain myself and i did like their ham and cheese sandwiches too. oh they had that too okay. yeah they had ham and cheese i thought it was just pimento turkey, cheese <laughs> pimento egg salad and the mother load was the chicken fillet sandwich oh okay so um have you tried you have to try this because it's no, a I great don't. variation we've had it don't. before because we've i've had, had it, before. it i love it and i yeah. am going to uh embrace yeah, they weren't the supposed meat. to give us all it was supposed to just be out here i tell you what people want your opinion on this stuff. i tell you what i will try one of these wings we have not right. had this before right. and we have the, never had their wings and we've never had their salmon this is an interesting a nice fried yeah you can down that whole it's actually breaded i haven't had a breaded chicken wing in forever everyone just does you haven't even addressed this salad yet very nice but I, I like the way they did the chicken on the chicken sliders. They, All right, here's what we got. It has do. a nice kick, and they, they feel like that's something they're, they're going for with the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. We're going to take our sliders. first break. We're yes, going to cut up some of these different various things. I might even take a little piece of the hot Yeah, you can I, try I think it. you need yeah. to try that. You can, you and, can try. Uh, I think they've stepped it up a little. Before we do that, we're going to put in the good word for our friends at Delaware Chicken and Seafood. Yes, Park. next Market. Thursday. When are we there, going right? back? Next Thursday. Uh, we're going to be there a week from today. Yes. And we're going to be talking about the upcoming Passover holiday. We're going to be talking and maybe eating their great housemate to filter fish. I know I will. I know uh, two, two, won't. two to three of you, uh, us will be doing that. Yeah, they make great chopped liver there. Segreto is a big gefilte fish man. Man, I will. Yeah, I will definitely eat some gefilte. The greatest poultry, and they'll have brisket and things that everything you need for your Passover Seder table. Yep. And along with, if you don't celebrate the, the Jewish holidays, they'll have everything you need for your table during the upcoming playoffs. Are almost here. And this weekend, why not go get some stuff for the grill, some great seafood for a master's watch party Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend. And we're coming into the final weeks of stone crab season. Hard to believe it ends May 1st. Wow. So get in there, 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood. They're open seven days a week. The website is DelawareChicken.com. Better yet, go in there because it is a beautiful store. Fabulous display cases. Uh, Jose and Gene do a great job. Uh, you get in and out real fast, so efficient, the best products, uh, quality, value, and uh, efficiency. That is the Delaware way. They've been doing it since the 1950s, and tell them the lunchbox sent you. All right, we're going to see uh, what we can get Mike to eat here. It's <laughs> getting more and more difficult on the show to handle this guy, but we're coming back. Batch uh, Southern Kitchen, unbelievable, and Kevin's going to join us, one of the more inspirational guys in this or any business. So we'll be back with more in a moment. For an exquisite sushi experience, Kaizen Sushi Bar and Grill in Fort Lauderdale is the place to go. 5640 North Federal Highway, just north of Commercial Boulevard. 
chef owner Hui Lam. He's a sushi savant, slicing and serving pristine fish and seafood flown in directly from Japan and around the world. Nigiri, sashimi, special rolls, and omakase dinners. He's ruined me from going anywhere else. It's that good. Open seven days for dinner and also for lunch. Even if you're not a sushi fan, they have great cooked options, including steaks, chops, rice and noodles, and other Japanese dishes. It's fantastic. For reservations and information, go to kaizenflorida.com. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. Delicious Mexican food with innovative twists. Margaritas with a medley of tongue-tingling flavors. I'm talking about Taco Craft, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. The place to go on Taco Tuesday and every day. It's located at 510 North Federal and Highway in Fort Lauderdale and also in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea at Plantation Walk and soon in Coral Springs. Taco Craft has specials every day, including bottomless drinks for a Sunday brunch and Taco Tuesdays with their $4 premium tacos, including their new Berea tacos with bone marrow broth. Oh, it's so good. They've even made a taco lover out of me, and they've got so much more, including fajitas, that open face smashed cheeseburger tortilla that's new, and a guacamole sample that's an explosion of flavors. Kitchen is open late. There's delivery and takeout. For more information, go to tacocraft.com. Tell them Mike Mayo, the Lunchbox, sent you. For Gilbert's 17th Street Grill, you know me, I love family-run places with quality food at fair prices served with passion and pride. And that's why I love Gilbert's. For more than a decade, Lenore, Beth, and Richie Gilbert have been serving up the best burgers, wings, ribs, salads, and desserts. It's a fast, casual spot. Everything prepared fresh to order from an immaculate open kitchen. They're at 1821 Cordova Road in Fort Lauderdale in the Cordova shops just south of 17th Street. Open every day but Sunday. One of my favorite burgers in South Florida. Big, round, juicy pucks of 100% Angus beef. Char grilled to perfection. And don't miss the sweet potato fries on the side. They're legendary. Go to Gilbert's. Feast and be happy. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. When I'm looking for some wicked good food for a wicked good lunch, there's only one place to go. That's Wicked Cheesesteaks in Fort Lauderdale. It's at 4824 North Federal Highway, just south of Commercial Boulevard and across from Holy Cross Hospital. My friend Brian there, he will hook you up with some really tasty treats. They've got cheesesteaks just like the best you can find in Philly, along with lobster rolls, because that's where he's from, Maine originally. And they have wings and pizza and everything you want to have a really good time. Wicked Cheese steaks they're open every day but tuesday check them out online wickedcheesesteaks.com tell them the lunchbox sent you if you're looking for a great place for steaks seafood and more go to tropical acres steakhouse and butcher shop it's at 2500 griffin road in dania just west of i-95 in the airport they've been there a long time since 1949 that means they're doing something right You'll get old school hospitality from the Studiali family, along with great value for tremendous service. Of course, you could also go into the bar for happy hour every day, four to six, and they have great value all night long. Also, a butcher shop that's open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., except Sunday. The dining room is open every day at 4 30, except Sunday. Go to Tropical Acres, tell them the lunchbox sent you. Okay, we're back on the lunchbox live at Batch. New Southern Kitchen and Tap, Fort Lauderdale, 525 North Federal Highway. Another gorgeous day. We had people walking along, just kind of admiring. You our, see that guy with the body? I mean, that was a little bit shameful. That, uh, we're sitting here stuffing our face while this guy is like looking like Jack LaLanne out there. But uh, I, I, I got to say this, and I, I don't know, are you are you sort of an expert on biscuits? I, I'm not, but, uh, you know, obviously everybody knows what, the, you know, they taste something good. That's as good a biscuit as I've had anywhere. You didn't even have the whole time. one. Yeah, uh, they and do the, the, and then all of it, but I mean, just every and and it has a little mayo quality of the crunch that you would like. I mean, it's definitely really, really tasty. I do love it. It's not necessarily part of my new regimen, but I cannot resist this. I think top, you have to try it. This yeah. crunchy top because what they do here, <laughs> they you. call it the drop biscuits, and it's a classic, just great, buttermilk man. biscuit. Uh, I call them drop dead gorgeous biscuits because they are beautiful, and they have the beautiful. They serve it in this skillet, uh, cast iron skillet. They come out fluffy on the inside, crunchy on the outside. They have a little bit of the 
I believe it's a, like a honey butter, sometimes a honey jalapeno butter. You, you could go into the deepest part of the and, deep south, and and, and, and and you could even be Bobby Bowden on a recruiting trip <laughs> and not get a biscuit that tastes that good. Yeah, speaking of Bobby Bowden, his name's still revered in Tallahassee. I was up there Absolutely. yesterday. As it well should be. And uh, his name and likeness is emblazoned on lots of coffee, uh, like mugs and shot glasses and things that are in the bookstore. I didn't buy any of the uh, Bobby paraphernalia, but... Uh, but yeah, that talk about classic Southern. I mean, that Bobby Bowden was a one of a kind classic. Love dealing with him, and I love dealing with these uh, batch drop biscuits. I am going to take a bite of this now. I did assemble a plate because it would be rude of me for them. You know, they they assemble this lovely, lovely lunch. And you guys, if you haven't been out here for lunch or the weekend brunch, dinner, seven days a week here, um, they really do a terrific job, and uh, they got high praise on the let's eat group over the weekend i my daughter was reading me a post as we were on the road trip she's like oh dad i was like what she goes somebody wrote the nicest thing about batch and it was a woman who has a son that has celiac disease obviously that's a you know it's a, a nothing to be trifled with where you no, cannot you have it. any gluten yeah you know it's not just gluten free by choice it's it, it causes serious uh, harmful impacts if you have any wheat or if it, anything is cross-contaminated with gluten the woman made arrangements to bring uh, her son in here for a family celebration. She made, you know, told them that my son has celiac, needs to be kind of made sure everything is just so. And she said the service they got here that I think it was Kevin himself or maybe it was Brandon, one of the other managers, but made sure, you know, before they when they first sat that everybody was OK. They assured them that there was being, you know, their special requests were being accommodated. And then even the chef came out before the main courses arrived and said, I just want to let you know, I was extra mindful. There was no cross contamination. We use fresh utensils and, uh, you know, for all the preparation. And that's the kind of thing where just like it blew the woman away. It made a lifelong fan of the family and the son. They had a great meal here. And not only that, but then there was all these comments apparently on the Let's Eat thread saying, wow, that is the kind of service and care and compassion that I want. I got to come check this place out. And uh, uh, I'm very fortunate that Kevin asked us to come check the place out yep. because it is totally Lunchbox approved. Well, and I like that they went again so often. Defo tries to remind you of this, but you are the ones letting things in, stopping things a lot of the time. So you see a lot more negative things than some of us see. And again, as anyone who knows how social media works, algorithms and right, they attention the is what pushes thing right out, right? Well, the negative yeah. seems to get a lot more attention. So it pushes things out. But the reality is a lot more positive happen at restaurants than negatives. I appreciate this person because, look, I have great experiences all over the place. Sarney's been on my rear for commenting on my experience at heritage saturday and i feel bad because we love reno and i want we're actually going to do more reno and my wife is telling me i have to do a what reno happened? was TikTok. it good? well it's fantastic obviously yeah but i don't think good or bad i don't think to post anything because to me it was my own experience i it's not i don't think to do it but i appreciate someone who does i appreciate someone that had a great experience look and kevin and the group here don't do it for that they do it because that's just how they do their job sarah is running around uh, kicking butt, they, helping us. They, they call it the hospitality business for a reason. They like to help people out. Yep. They like to be hospitable. They want people to be happy. They want to see smiles. They don't want to see people bitching and they moaning. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is provide a really satisfactory experience. And uh, I'm glad that it, things worked out for you at Heritage. Did you get the mayo discount? or how did No, I don't, I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Brino got there halfway through the meal. I don't really look for things like that. I just wanted to make sure he was there so she could meet him. Yeah. Because anyone who's watched our shows knows reno is an experience reno him not only his heritage but reno himself is an experience and my wife married me so she's open to experiences <laughs> so i wanted her to get to experience all that is reno and he he was telling her all his stories and she because you know her she works I'll tell you what for all is you know the way he could come off as let's say a fairly Piece brusque and abusive character online in response to people who are brusque and abusive to him and his staff yeah he is the nicest, sweetest oh, guy. He's a sweet dude. He is so good. When you come in his house, which is, that's what his dining room is. Yes, yes. And you comport yourself well, he will go to the ends of the world, earth to make sure that you're happy. And if something's not to your liking, he's going to fix it. Um, and that's the way most people are. Kevin here is yep. totally like that. He must have gotten engrossed in a very yeah, he uh, has a meeting going a on, big so. meeting. But I, I got to dive into this biscuit. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. so anyways, so my wife, who's in digital marketing, who mm -hmm. deals with 
uh, businesses and can't. I'm sorry, that's so freaking. Tell cool. her how they feel. Well, it's, it's my favorite biscuit in South Florida. That's it's one so of the best cool. I've ever had. Uh, so I've told her what Reno said. Reno is telling her some of the things he said. I'm like, yeah, he's throwing dough at people, and she's like, there's no way. He's like, no, I'm. There's, I mean, I'm telling you, I've done it. He's kicking them out in the middle of meals, but they've done what. To, there's to, it's been va- wor- there's been reasons for them, right. him to do it yeah. right um and the other patrons usually applauded i again everyone's I, happy look that, it was my lunch. mom's doctor who was there with her teen daughter the night where he threw out an abusive patron <laughs> and everybody stood and <laughs> and, and, I, and applauded up. when 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 they tossed when he tossed the the guy who was being a jerk out you know i'm a big believer in karma what you put yeah, out in this sure. world you get back so if you it was lunch jerk, on a saturday at two and there was a line the place was packed, and there was literally people waiting outside, and they were okay waiting outside to get in. So obviously he's doing something right. All right. Meanwhile, on to Batch here. I, I have assembled a plate, Defo, because I know you and the audience will be disappointed if I don't sample some of the food. I've made myself my little vintage three-year-old child plate. <laughs> I want to describe I got my shrimp. An avocado salad with a little bit. They brought us two dressings. One was, what was it again? A horse There's radish? a horseradish, and I asked for a... Uh, Citrus, they do a citrus lime vinaigrette. And I know lime. we're I all watching our waistline because so. I like a little bite. And I'm there going go. in now. I got the nice, properly grilled shrimp uh, with the horseradish uh, uh, dressing. Mm. That tastes like spring. It's green. It's light. It's springy, and uh, it makes me think of Augusta National. When I have something, so so does the chicken. Uh, and thank you. What did you advise me to do as my dietitian and? co-host now what should i do how can i eat this in a way that i won't oh, do? eat half the bun yeah there you go if, if you eat the bun at all i removed the half yeah yeah because Devo, i think ate it without the bun which is fine i mean it's great it, I, I it's so tasty I, i'm tempted though because of the way they did the bun the bun's nice it looks great i mean i definitely <laughs> want to take a bite of that is there anything that is like the perfectly they toasted it, perfect. yeah. it looks like the outer <laughs> edges of the eclipse the other day yeah. when the moon going over the sun that's a very very Handsome bun. But if you're looking for a tasty piece of uh, like a chicken tender type of thing, yep. uh, seasoned perfectly in terms of the uh, heat that's on there. Well, this the mayo crunch. Uh, they did a tremendous job with this. Absolutely great. Mm. Yeah, they call this like the Nashville hot slider. Really nice. I think they were tinkering with it to make one really hot and one mild yeah. to kind of go along with the different taste levels that people have. Mm. That's good. And you know what? To me, makes the whole thing. The pickle. Yeah, the pickle's nice. I think they do it in house. They do like they do their own pickles. They do some with the fire and ice pickles. They do a lot of different things, which is really cool. And um, Defo, I will follow your advice. Um, you know, I had a couple of bites of the bun. The bun is fine. That's but nice. Eat the rest right of it now, without it. Yeah, there you go. You know, I don't want to say the c word because I know you flip out. Yeah, but yeah. carbs are my That's enemy fine. right now, All and right. Uh, I am just going to have a nice. I know you're going through some stuff. You know, we're we're here to support you, Michael. Thank there you. There you go. Oh, it's good. That's a great piece of. There's filth, the man right there. Beer. There's the man responsible for this. As I'm stuffing my face, we're yeah. going to get the man, Kevin Danilo. I'm going to clear my mouth, clear my throat. Luby's going to clear a seat and a space and hopefully clear his chicken bones because nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but we welcome back to the lunchbox. It's been a few months. Kevin D, how are you, my man? Hey, we're doing all right, all right. Good to see you, Kevin. Always a pleasure. How are things shaking? Good, 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 good. You were engrossed. It must have been a big meeting. You got meeting. big things on tap, right? I was playing Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to avoid the lunchbox. No, how how are you, my friend? How's it been going lately? And uh, man, I was telling people about that post. I don't know if you saw it on Let's Eat. The, the woman with the uh, whose son had celiac, and you guys yeah. took great care of him. Tell us a little bit about. Uh, that, I mean, this is what it's all about in the hospitality yeah, business, right? Uh, well, yeah, I think hospitality at its core, it's about trying to make people feel special, appreciated, uh, you know, any requests that they have to, to be able to treat them properly. Uh, but on top of it, our concept has always been kind of based around Southern hospitality, making sure somebody feels like they're a guest in, they're a guest in your home, uh, especially when somebody has a situation like that, a, a kid that they're trying to take care of and we know the restaurant business is hard, right? And we know some operators are very black and white with the way they do things. So we've always tried to make it a point that if there's a request that we can accommodate or make somebody feel appreciated and you know, it's okay to, to have something that you need special. It's it's not just being difficult to be difficult. It's health concern that yeah. they know that they can come in and 
we're going to pull our executive chef out of the kitchen. We're going to sit them down at the table and, and make sure that the dish goes out perfectly so that somebody not only can feel safe, but that, that it's okay. It's okay to have to ask for a little bit more. Yeah. And, you know, now I'm seeing somebody, my girlfriend has some certain allergies. You can't have carrots. You can't have oranges. And, you know, some places just like, think that it's uh, just by choice but no when you have an allergy you got to take it seriously and make sure things don't show up on the plate or not used at all in the preparation make sure you check with the kitchen that it's not in any of the sauces of the you know when you're doing a braise and things like that so uh, again I am very appreciative of how mindful you are because never had any issues here in terms of when we have those uh, allergies and special requests yeah it is it's definitely hard you know that the executing the number of dishes that come out of a kitchen on a, on a nightly basis or, or, or during a brunch or even a lunch service, it, it is difficult, the number of ingredients you have in a kitchen. So th there are a lot of places that, that don't care. They, you know, they just, it's just, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to accommodate. Yeah. And, and they, they will politely say, hey, you know, we're just not the right place. And I, I've never liked that approach. I, I can certainly understand it as an operator, but if, if I don't know. What, yeah. what would the world be like if we just didn't do things that exactly. were hard? Right. You know, yeah, you, just, yeah. you, just, you just do it. Do so it. you talk Southern hospitality uh, here at Batch Southern New Southern Kitchen and Tap. That's what it's all about. But it's Masters Week, and Defoe is obsessed with the Masters. I got to go 14 times to cover it as a sports writer. I didn't know if you uh, you do anything kind of as a nod to the Masters. Do you, do you have any kind of pimento cheese sandwich <laughs> specials or or? Uh, uh, or it's just kind of uh, you'll have it on the TV screens and serve your lemonade and vodka, which is always popular around. The we clubhouse. will. We will have it on all the TVs. Uh, obviously, we have four four stores. Two of them are Southern Kitchen. Two of them are pubs. Uh, obviously, the pubs are much more sports based. We have UFC 300 this weekend, which is a huge, huge fight. Oh, wow. Uh, but generally here, we, we don't get too, too involved with sports. So, so no food features for. Thank you for uh the masters but the kentucky derby is coming up and that's kind of the one time we we break our rule where uh you, you come out and what's you, your opinion of the mint julep in all honesty you guys deal with bourbon and whiskey and all kinds of stuff uh, it's fun. how would you rate it as a drink would you ever order one it's fun once a year yeah <laughs> you know, it's fun exactly. when you wear a stupid hat yeah, and, yeah. Uh, exactly. you know, stupid clothes and, and you go out with your friends and you because it's authentic right yeah. have i ordered one throughout the rest of the year Never. <laughs> not, not no, my thing. no. It's, Let's not my face thing. it. It's a it's a horrible way to ruin perfectly good bourbon. Uh, I don't understand it unless you like mouthwash flavored drinks. You know, um, but I, it's enjoyable. But you're sell a lot it's, of them on Derby Day. It's, so it's listen. It's it's mint's great. Whiskey's great. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it in the glass. Uh, you know, Pappy and and uh, no, God, you no. know, uh, or even uh, the Weller or anything like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's yeah, it's. But it is what it is, and uh, we are approaching Derby time. I'm glad that you are into, obviously, with all the Southern spirits and the Kentucky bourbons and all that that you got here. So it's a, a big day. What do you have on tap? I mean, first of all, you got your regular Whiskey Wednesdays that seem to be booming, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Live music, great whiskey features. We'll bring in some educators, teach some classes, do some 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 fun bottle releases that are super expensive, and we'll we'll sell them at our cost. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a cool way for people to be able to try things that they've never tried before uh and then derby obviously we do a big party we'll get some tvs nice. outside have people dress up we'll t team up with the local charities the uh fort lauderdale whiskey society or different whiskey societies in, in in the counties and bring a bunch of people in costume contests we do a fun uh if you pick the pr trifecta if you get it we give you a thousand dollar gift card oh wow oh, i might not even pay a thousand yeah that's come on out and you win a thousand dollar gift card so that's a lot of fun and uh, you know, juleps are it's it's fun for the event, right? It's like have you guys ever been to, to Wrigley? Oh yeah, right. Wait, oh. Wrigley's great. Have you ever had old style? I don't think I have. It's their it's their their it's cheap crappy beer, light beer, beer. and yeah. it's absolutely amazing at Cubs, you know, at Wrigleyville and Wrigley. But I've you go anywhere else and you you don't want it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that's no, like, true. I've uh, yeah, you know, they have those rooftop uh, seats yep. across the way. I think. Uh, I've never sat up there, but it's been a while since I've been to Chicago, but great place. Uh, meanwhile, 
let's talk about okay some of these uh the you got the nashville hot sliders here did you kick up, kick up the heat on them a little bit they still seem, in the works yeah. still in the works where uh we are gonna have the mike mayo secret <laughs> uh you'll be paying for it tomorrow version no, this of this one exactly. definitely had you could feel it feels it. like it's, it's a little you yeah. know it's a little bit more and the jambalaya as usual very much on point awesome. and we've got the salmon dish which again i'm trying to be healthier got the shrimp and avocado all kinds of great options here for you know, now that we're moving into the warmer spring and summer months. The only thing wrong with this table I see here is to, <laughs> of the biscuits. I don't see a complete they biscuit. Yeah, they're, not, they're wasting <laughs> right? my favorite biscuit in all of South Florida. So, it's like so the muffin top. Well, just just the top of the muffin. Well, no, it's more, it's, you know, I, I've become accustomed to this thing that I think it's called the... Uh, Feats of strength. <laughs> oh, my my oh, big bite. Oh, the big bite. Oh, yeah. And, uh, big bite. Well, I'm, what Ooh. the first thing I noticed my, is my that doctors have, have gotten it? together and said that uh, if I continue the big bite, <laughs> do you see what happened to the uh, Grandmaster Sumo Champion Akabono the other day? Uh, unfortunately, you did, did you see that? No, story? I have no idea what you're talking also, about. Also, a very un un untimely <laughs> deny. No, I was reading the obituaries because when I went to the Olympics in uh, Japan, uh, Winter Olympics in 98, Akabono, Hawaiian-born, U.S.-born, first foreigner who achieved, like, the grand sumo status. He was revered, and he came to the that Olympics. He was there, and he came through the press room one time. Big boy, 500 pounds. Uh, but uh, unfortunately... Uh, he uh, he passed the other day at uh, way too young of age. But I am I'm I love you know what? All right, I gotta I'm gonna, gotta make you, you gotta you yeah, have listen. to accommodate Kevin here. I, I, I want to say this about all, Kevin. All, all month long I wait for the Mike Mayo. Big all right. Man. Before you do this though, I have to pay homage to Kevin. I find him one of the most inspirational people that we've met on the Mike Mayo Lunchbox tour. The way that he talks about and got involved in the business, and the way that he runs his place and his other uh, locations, uh, just incredible. And you can easily uh, see it reflected in the way all of these dishes come out. So um, always uh, thinking, hey, if I was in business, I would want to be just like Kevin, <laughs> handle myself the same way. All right. Thank you. I'm going to do a big bite. We're going to take a break. Can you stick around? I need you to break our – talk about horse racing in the Derby. We have our weekly – contest and because i was away a few days we need to do a tiebreaker where you're going to help me you're going to pick either what's in my left hand or right hand we've got two people in it uh, oh nice but you first my favorite I, was excited. Game, I thought there was a bag of drugs <laughs> <What's that? laughs> what is that? all right here all we right. go the big bite mike Wait, mayo can i remove the top bun and just uh and, and just work with the meat and the pickles no, or I gotta, you're the boss, you gotta go man. on yeah, yeah, go 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 what that's okay this well, is yeah, a modest version modest version it's still big enough this bite oh my god watch your fingers like the whole thing. Are it's you like doing that? It's like Secretariat really? eating a sandwich. You understand Val's walking yeah. up. You're doing this as Val's oh walking up. Oh my God, Val, this is disgusting. No, no. That was the best timing in the history of the world. That's great. Val, who hasn't seen you in a little bit, is excited to see you. And this is what she will see. This is what she walks into. As she Kevin. walks up. <laughs> what our customers <laughs> want. the relationship. This is what we want everybody goes, to see. Oh my God. Hey, I guess she has to see you at your worst and not your best. You might You'll as well. be hearing from Mayo's attorney. <laughs> We'll pick up, bro. <laughs> oh my God, that makes me so happy. <laughs> we'll be back. For an exquisite sushi. When the Brooklyn boy in me wants a good bagel with Nova or some matzo ball soup, homemade knishes, or a great deli pastrami sandwich on rye, you know where I go? Grandpa's Cafe in Dania Beach. It's been around a long time, an institution, but a little over a year ago, a pair of New Yorkers came in, bought it, and refurbished the place. It's beautiful, and they are now serving great breakfast, brunch, lunch. They've got the omelets. They've got Eggs Benedict. They've got all kinds of great baked goods like Ruggleich. Grandpa's is just off Federal Highway on Southwest 1st Street in Dania Beach. It's open seven days. Go in there. Tell them that the lunchbox sent you. When people come to me and say, Mike, where should I go out to eat? I got guests coming from out of town. Where should we go? Cafe Seville. That's the answer. 2768 East Oakland Park Boulevard. It's a Fort Lauderdale perennial, serving the finest in Spanish and continental cuisine in a cozy, friendly, comfortable setting. Joey Esposito and Sally, his better half, they've been running the place for a long time. It's been open since the 1980s. They got great Spanish classics like paella, shrimp with garlic sauce and all kinds of great seafood dishes. The stuffed veal chop, oh, that's my favorite. Go to Cafe Seville. It's open every day but Sunday at 5 p.m. for dinner. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. Do you like burgers? Do you like wings? 
You like late night food and sports on big screen TVs and cold beer and friendly vibe and great people. Then you want to check out Shenanigans, 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach. You go to Shenanigans, you get yourself all the good stuff, the fresh fish every day, the black and grilled wings. And of course, the kitchens are open late. Go there. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. Fish, a sophisticated setting. I'm talking about Corvina Seafood Grill. It's at 110 Plaza Real South in Boca Raton, just south of Palmetto Park Road. It's the place to go for the freshest and local seafood and fish, some of it with a Peruvian twist like their great ceviches. It's open seven days for dinner. They also have happy hours seven days a week. You don't want to miss it. It's a great place. CorvinaBocaRaton.com for more information and reservations. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. We're back on the lunchbox. We better, but yeah, we better get Defo back in his position. Uh, oh, thrusting Val to and, make her debut on the oh, lunchbox. Oh, I didn't realize that she's. Wow! Welcome to the lunchbox, Defoe Val. Did that on his own. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm back in town. I haven't seen her in like four days, and uh, now Welcome. she's on the show. We've got Kevin. You know Val. Yep. Um, nice to see you again. again. How you doing? I'm like, good, great. having a good week. Well, we've got to do a contest now. Um, and Kevin, you're going to do the honors. Well, here's here's how it works. And, you know, usually we do this. We take care of this on a Monday. It is um, the Gulfstream Weekly Ten Palms Sunday Brunch Buffet Contest, where if you pick the have a, a winning restaurant, the pick the winning horse and then have the tiebreaker, which was in this week. This week's case was the women's NCAA championship game. You had to give the winning team in the margin. Anyway, bottom line, the uh, restaurant was Big Bear Brewing up in Coral Springs. Yep, in Coral I don't Springs. know if you've ever been up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the one of the earlier forerunners of the uh, microbrew movement. And again, a lot of people got that. Uh, a lot of people should have got the winner of the eighth race because it was a there was a scratch and then it was a dead heat. So there were actually two winners: the number five horse and the number six horse, Direct uh, Restro and Watchtower. But after three out of ten horses in the field would have been winners, only six people had that winning horse, the Watchtower. And then of those, it came down to the basketball game. Two people had South Carolina beating Iowa by nine points. The final margin was 12, but those oh, wow. were the closest. So Mark Bailow, or Bailo, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing. I don't know how you pronounce it. Mark Bailo and Wayne Geller, congratulations, you guys are – the finalists in the running for the brunch for two and i'm gonna also have a special wrinkle this week but we will get to that in a moment first of all and of course i dropped one of the i dropped them right on the ground so well uh, technically we only need one <laughs> we only need one that's, uh, that's the one, okay. one in your hands the no. one i selected mike that's the one he selected yeah. okay so Oh my goodness! Now we've got everybody scrambling. What, what a what a what a what a what a week this was. Okay, we got. He said this one, so that's the one it is. Congratulations, Wayne Geller. I think Wayne, the first time winner. Congratulations, of sir. A brunch for yeah, two for at sure. Ten Ponds. But this week there are no losers because <laughs> thanks to Val, her generosity, she uh, recently got a. Uh, hundred dollar gift certificate to batch that she purchased at auction uh <laughs> the annual the charity story, event which uh, we don't want to tell the whole story do we? Why not? oh okay go for, go for, for it yeah. tell right, the story same thing. oh goodness well before we get to that uh like mark Bailo, your consolation prize is a hundred dollar <laughs> gift certificate to batch that can be used for any meal breakfast lunch i'm sorry not breakfast no. brunch brunch weekend brunch Saturday and lunch Sunday. or dinner they're open Seven days. Here, right? Open yeah. seven days. We just and ask that you bring a love interest. Exactly. That's what it should be used for. And do a big bite. <laughs> and do a big bite. <laughs> exactly. Just don't choke. <laughs> All right. So, Mark Bailo, you're going to get a gift certificate right here to Batch, Fort Lauderdale, New Southern Kitchen and Tap. And, Wayne Geller, you have the all-day brunch buffet for two at 10 Palms on a Sunday of your choice. But you can make it next Sunday, April 21st. We're going to have our 
uh, bash. quarterly brunch bash where we get out there uh, a whole bunch of us, including Luby and Defo and me and Val. And uh, it's going to be a fun time. And if you want to come out to that, just uh, yeah, Tony Segretto will come out. And you should also come out to Batch on the Saturday, then come to the Brunch Bash on Sunday, and there then you you'll have a big-time brunch doubleheader for that next weekend, the 20th and 21st. If you want to come out to the Brunch Bash, just email me, MikeMayoEats at gmail.com, uh, and just let me know the number of people in your party, no deposit required, and you'll just show up that day at noon. We'll be going from noon to 4. Better yet, come on out here to Batch this weekend. Because you're serving uh, brunch both Saturday and Sunday? 10 to 4. I'm always up at the host stand uh, greeting people. So come ask for me. And we'll take care of you. Val, what did you think of the brunch here at... Oh, uh, it's fantastic. What's your favorite I'm item? addicted to your um, shrimp... Um, shrimp Benedict? Benedict. It's phenomenal. Thank you. Over it, you make very good um, hollandaise sauce as well. I'm pretty snobby about my hollandaise sauce. And... You definitely won on that. Um, you won me over with that one. Awesome. And the the um, fried uh, tomato. The fried green fried yep. tomato, tomato as the English muffin. Instead of yep. a muffin. It's so brilliant. That's a um, great yeah. southern touch. Yep. I love it. Thank you. That's Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Shrimp and grits are really great. Shrimp and grits are fantastic. All right. Before we let Kevin go and before we take our final break, Kevin, what do we got? I know you're doing so much. You do a lot of events. Ph events and <clears throat> philanthropic work, working with some of the dog rescues, pet rescues. Yep. What's what's happening on that front? Uh, so yesterday, actually, really cool. Uh, at our Delray location, we did a charity barrel pick, uh, which we've talked about before. We basically bring in from our, our supplier partners a barrel of whiskey. Uh, and then every dollar that we raise from the sale of the retail bottles. So if you buy one of these bottles and take them home with you, uh, every dollar from those bottles goes back to the, the charitable partner that we partnered with. So yesterday we did a barrel selection in our Delray location uh, for 1792 bourbon. So we have a full proof 1792 barrel coming in. I like in. that. That's it's a good bourbon. fantastic. Yeah. It's probably one of the best values uh, of all full proof bourbons out. And the, the barrels the last two years have been incredible. And it's for best foot forward which is in Palm Beach County, and it, it, it goes to benefit kids that are in the foster system. So really, really great cause. Uh, what we always like to say is drink for the kids, yeah. you know? <laughs> so if you go buy a fancy bottle of bourbon, take it home, and your spouse yells at you, you say, I'm, hey, I'm drinking for the kids, you know, it's because they're a good cause. So uh, if you need to buy a fancy bottle of bourbon or just a good bottle of bourbon, come see us and uh, you know that every single dollar that you spend that's above the invoice cost is going to go to support. Uh, generally, it's, it's, it's kids veterans and uh, animals. So it's kind of the foundations see, close to us. I see, see Val is land. just like Defoe, yeah. very attracted Here to the, the horsey <laughs> on top of the plant in his bottle. It's derby time coming up soon. Yeah. So again, Blanks. how does that work on derby day where you have to submit like your trifecta or how, how, yeah. you submit it online? You, you come in and we, we have a bunch of cards. You fill out the trifecta uh, with, with uh, you know, the three horses you pick. You rip it in half. You got Half for you is your receipt. Half for us. If you win, you bring it up to us. We verify it. Give you a thousand dollar gift card. And this is at all four locations, yeah. or just here? Yeah, and, and I think it's five hundred at the pubs and a thousand at uh, the southern. Oh, Kitchens. and each one has its own separate yeah. prize. Okay, um, man, this is something. It might require me to come here instead of Gulfstream. It seems like a <laughs> that's a great a, that's a, a great no thing. risk proposition where I can't lose hundreds well, of dollars. Have you ever had could... have you ever had the, the world's greatest drink, the, the mint julep? Mint julep. <laughs> it's <laughs> Defoe's favorite. What we're gonna do for Defoe so terrible. We're gonna get a great it's piece of gefilte fish from Delaware <laughs> and put it with a mint and julep. And, a mint julep. There you go. and I will pay him some money if he to finishes both. Absolutely. And that would be something. But uh <laughs> have to introduce the Mike Mayo big gulp. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, man. Kevin, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much, my man. Uh, let us take our final break today, and then we'll come back to wrap up this edition of the Lunchbox after these words. Food from a scratch kitchen, delicious drinks and house-made spirits from a craft bar, a great vibe inside and out with a spacious patio. I'm talking about Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap Fort Lauderdale in the heart of the city at 525 North Federal Highway. It's open seven days for lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch with classics like fried chicken and waffles and shrimp and grits and creative items like pecan-crusted salmon and a fried green tomato BLT. And the drinks? Smooth sipping and so good. There's convenient free parking and a garage next door, happy hour at the bar, an entire patio, four to seven Monday to Friday, and live music every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's pet and people friendly and with cozy fire pits for when the temperature dips. 
For reservations and more information, go to BashSouthernKitchen.com. Hey, it's Mayo here for Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Since 1951, for over 70 years, the home of freshness. I've been a customer for over three decades, and it's the place to go for poultry, steaks, meats, and of course, their unbelievable selection of fish and seafood. They've got it all. Key West pink shrimp, grouper, snapper, lobster, and of course, Florida stone crab claws of all sizes. Don't forget their famous fish dip and a full selection of prepared foods. It's located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, just across from the Seminole Classic Casino. Doug Carter and crew will take great care of you. Make sure to check out their weekly specials and daily catch online at DelawareChicken.com. Quality, value, freshness, that's the Delaware way. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. If you like seafood in a comfortable setting, outdoors, even keel fish shack at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the Sea, and also now with a new location on Las Olas Boulevard. Those are my spots. Upscale food and a down-home setting. The chef owners, Dave and Brad, do a terrific job with all the seafood classics that you want. They have the best grilled oysters in town, bang-bang shrimp, lobster rolls, and and daily fish specials. They also have weekend brunch Saturday and Sunday. They have daily happy hour four to seven. And they also have other weekly specials like mussels on Monday and oysters on Tuesday. Go to Even Keel Fish Shack and tell them that the Lunchbox sent you. We're back on the Lunchbox. And I want to get, uh, we've got Val here. Hi. And uh, Welcome. It's I'm so excited. funny because, you know, you used to be very shy. You don't even want to know that. In, that <laughs> like a lot of people, you don't want anybody to know that you know me or I don't know if that was a shy thing yeah. as much as she's just smart. <laughs> <laughs> like my and, wife, a lot of the time, distances herself from me. And again, she is not shy. And Deco. So. Oh, no, there's, just, no, there's no like distance. I'm just, I'm not a public figure. I've never been a public figure. And I'm even in general life. I'm well, usually pretty private. very comfortable. Well, welcome. On the headset. About, <laughs> welcome. Uh, to like, and you got Hi. the headphone, unfortunately, that has a lot of the Mike Mayo schmutz. Detritus. <laughs> she corrected me. I used to pronounce it detritus. But she it's corrected me. She's a wordsmith. Yeah. She actually was a creative writing major or yes. F, F, has yeah. a master's at degree, State. which, of um, course, no, at, um, FIU. FIU. Yeah. At FIU, FIU. Actually. But uh, uh, sometimes when I take these big bites that when I try even not to do it, others encourage yes, me. They you push know, <laughs> I was able to ward off the, uh, That's you know, okay. I have perfect timing in watching in to see the big. Bites. <laughs> yeah, I warded <laughs> off the suggestions of. Uh, Defo, who no longer holds yeah. some Svengali like sway over me, but Stable. when Kevin oh, says, Hey, I want to see the big bite, you, you know, absolutely. uh, yeah, and absolutely. again, that chicken slide are pretty darn good. But, uh, oh, what I was gonna say is, um, Luby, you're getting ready to go on a little trip, the Dominican Republican, yes, Re tomorrow Re Republic. Afternoon. Yes, what's going on in terms of uh, it's culinary. my uh, culinary. I mean, uh, I don't know, it's interesting because it is when you go to the islands, a lot of the time, the food is. It, it, you know, reminiscent of like when you're in Italy, you eat a lot of quote unquote Italian food. I, but they do have variety. They do try to get to American food. But for me, that just the uh, everyday Dominican food is fantastic. It's really good. I remember we went a few years ago when uh, one of her Shirley's friends uh, was ill. Thank God she's doing really well now. Um, and so we mixed some hospital visits with tried to see the country because my first time there, and we didn't have a bad meal. Uh, so I'm really excited. We'll be there from Friday to Wednesday. What's the specialty? Is it a lot of rice and beans? Yeah, rice. It's, it's, it's all the rice and beans. Pork, they do plantains, maduros. They do a pork. Uh, I don't know if they call it lechon because I think that's more what the Cuban pork is. But they do pork. They different chicken dishes. It's very similar. The Caribbean, very, the Caribbean Latin Hispanic food is very similar when it's Puerto Rico or Cuba or the Dominican Republic. They do a thing called, yeah, I know in PR Puerto Rico, they do mofongo. They do uh, a, a planting dish similar to that in Dominican Republic. That's well, really you good. Ha have a fine time. You're leaving um, tomorrow. We're going to have, we're going to be in the good hands of the professor. Ken Jacobson is yes, going to be running the board at Gulfstream tomorrow. And, uh, Next week, we're going to have a couple of more replays, including this show. And yes. uh, we're also going to have one live edition where we're going to be uh, from home show with uh, not only Defo, but our friend Carlos Frias. Yeah, I'm excited for you the guys. The former Carlos is great. Uh, Miami Herald food editor, food writer, James Beard award winning writer, which I say that with that much a lot? jealousy <laughs> and contempt. <laughs> Uh, Carlos okay. is a great guy, very talented. He also came up 
similar path. He started as a sports writer and he ended up in food. So uh, it happens to all the best of us. Uh, but I think that's going to do it today. I got to put in the good word. Thank you for Val for coming out and uh, donating the gift card that she wanted auction. And uh, again, that is going to be going to Mark Balo. And then Wayne Geller gets the uh, congratulations, the, both of you. The uh, uh, the I'm Ten glad, Palms Prize. I'm glad you had two winners today. Yeah, everybody wins today yeah, on the lunchbox. Exactly. Uh, can I get you a beautiful biscuit? Because the <laughs> the uh, jam they're using now is straight raspberry, no orange. Uh, so again, it is okay. all all clear for. Uh, all your different dietary <laughs> needs and restrictions. I didn't even get into the whole Florida road trip of the different dining we did. I will say this. Um, kudos to your men, Ed Garcia, uh, Luby, and I love that he got out to Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse made a uh, very road-weary stop at a Texas Roadhouse in Port St. Lucie yesterday. Unbelievable value. They have this $14.99 sirloin steak, eight ounces on a Wednesday night with two sides for $14.99. Basically had dinner for three for like sixty bucks. It's yep. crazy, uh, and uh, again, uh, kudos our server uh, Lindsay was outstanding, and the food came out boom. We were able to get back on the road. No you didn't time. even mention Ed Garcia's name. I did not drop his name. I I, I came so close. You would admire my restraint because <laughs> the on duty manager, uh, a guy named Ethan, came around said has everything. He checked twice again. Really, yeah, really well run shop, just like batches here, but uh, and. I did everything in my power saying, hey, you know, you know, Ed Garcia, I'm kind of, a, <laughs> kind of buddies with him. I did not do it because kind of a big deal. The, the meal I'm was proud of you. I'm reasonable also enough. sort of confused by that, but I'm proud of you because I would have mentioned Ed like six times. I am now a full-fledged <laughs> fan again, and Defoe can no longer accuse me of being an elitist and chain-hating person. Again, I, I judge everything on its own merits and uh, Texas Roadhouse. They're doing a great job in the last two experiences. They're just so good. So well, someone else does a great job, and the event's today is away, so we probably should promote it one more time. Batch. Uh, Batch does a fantastic job. But yeah. visit Lauderdale oh. Food and Wine Festival. It's year-round now, and they're uh, bubbles. Yeah, the uh, Raising Your Brunch Cocktail Game. Beyond that's Mimosas. Be, that's what it's Beyond, Beyond Mimosas. Mimosas is this Saturday. Yep. April 13th uh, is going to be at... The Primo Liquor location on Weston Road in Weston. Our friends Sam and Kaushal, uh, they will be hosting the Visit Lauderdale crew, including two great mixologists that are going to be uh, showing you how to do things just beyond this simple uh, Bloody Marys and uh, mimosas. They're going to be making Cure Royales and Espresso Martinis. Again, uh, go online, vlfoodwine.com, to get your tickets for that, or you can also get your early bird tickets for next year's Grand Tasting. We love the Visit Lauderdale Food Wine Festival. Again, vlfoodwine.com to get your tickets for this event. And then we've got the Burger Month is coming up, 954 Burger Month in May. More details about that can be had on the vlfoodwine.com website. All right, man, I got through today. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit, uh, I don't want to say jet lag, but. Uh, but you did a lot of driving. That, that turnpike. Is a lot. That turnpike in Orlando. Orlando has turned into just. The world's worst parking lot. I just I sat there in traffic horrible. a couple of days, and I it's don't want any car. Yeah, wow. it's it's bad. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks again to everybody, Kevin and crew at Batch. Come on out here if you haven't tried it yet. Really, these uh, biscuits and the jambalaya. Uh, and again, if you want to go lighter side with the salads or the fish, you can't oh, go wrong with that. Shrimps are beautiful. Shrimp are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, batch is beautiful. And again, free parking in the garage next door. Don't forget that. Have a great trip, Luby. Defo, we'll see you at uh, Golf Stream tomorrow. Val, always a pleasure to see you. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome the first to the lunchbox. First edition to the lunchbox. I will Thank kiss your you. hand. And uh, we'll, say, uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow at Golf Stream. Until then, enjoy every sandwich. Yeah.